Hi, this is a really quick um, overview of our layout system for our resellers and any, any clients that wish to have some layout control for their scoreboards. Uh, today the example is My Cricket, this small um, interface here. You can see it's got the, the more recent fast buttons with summary two summaries and a head version there. So you, using your password, you double click on the solid. If you don't have a password, you might not have access, so you contact us. This is a layout interface. In the top section here is the buttons, or the layouts, as we just went through them. We looked at those first three. Um, the fast buttons on the interface will be the the top three layouts. You can have more. In this case, there's quite a few down there. Okay. This is where you'll punch in the position on the, on the monitor of your screen. Left and top is usually set to zero, zero, so the scoreboard starts in the top left corner. That's the size of your screen in pixel size. Um, you can use colors, color backgrounds, or you can put in graphics as back backgrounds. They can be JPEGs or PNGs. Okay, um, this field here is for non-selectable screens. In this case, the only non-selectable screen will be the player display. That's for use with the player trigger. These are the, the individual fields down below. If I access all of them, you can see how many fields go into a typical cricket program. Okay, to work on one layout at a time, just filter it. Click on the filter up top. Select the layout you want to work on. Now, now we're looking at all of the fields in the heads layout. These are the fields you can see here inside square brackets, current bowler, headshot, square bracket, and so on. Over plus balls complete as samples. Now you get to know these different fields or you'll copy them from, from other layouts. But if you're not too sure on the field name, there's a function here called show scores. If you click on that, you'll see all of the different fields available. Now this is tab oriented. General match. This shows a result of what the data is getting as well, so you can see, you can confirm that you're using the right field. If you want to use um, batting team name, that's currently Melbourne Stars. There is a refresh button if you want to press that, it will just turn green. But instead of remembering the name batting team name, you can hold control down and click it. It says down here, see, control click will put the field name in the clipboard. Okay, so I'm pressing control and I'm clicking this one. It confirms that batting team name is copied to clipboard. You can move this field aside and go into here. You can go into a field and you can paste it. Okay, I'll take that out. You can combine field names with text. Uh, down here we've got current bowler wickets Close in a square bracket, then there's a slash, then there's current bowlers runs. If we make this wider, we'll see that there's actually more content to it. Comma, space, OV dot, current bowler over. That's this field at the bottom under Hazelwood's. I think that's his stats. Now, um, you must have the scores um, field database name in this column here. If you type in a field and it doesn't work, this could be the reason. It's hard to miss because all the other fields have them. When you're setting up something like this, it's cater for enough space for um, the worst case scenarios. In this case, you have to allow for the maximum amount of space required if this bowler was to um, bowl these maximum overs and so on. So to test this, I'm going to cut and paste, I'm going to copy this field here. I've just copied it. Now I'm going to type in what the maximum might be. He might get 10 wickets for 100 runs, comma space over 100 overs, 0.5 balls. 
Now just typing it in like that and press hide and show screen, you'll see it does fit in there. Okay, so in the worst case scenario, there's enough space to cater for all of that data. Once I'm happy with that, well, firstly, you'll adjust it if you need to. I'm going to paste back in the, the correct field and you'll see that will revert back. Okay, so make sure you do that with all of the fields here. So now in the case of batsman's names, you have to set up some boundaries. Otherwise the batsman's name might run straight across some other data or a photo. So let's go to batsman 1. Batsman, current batsman 1. An easy way here is leave the current batsman name there, but put some extra text after his name. So it's always good to put G or J so you can allow for the tails. Now I'm going to refresh that. Now you can see the name truncated near the end. It's stopped with the characters and I put a dot there. Now that's because it is looking at the width of this field. So in this width column here, you can see we've set it to 180. If I didn't have that in there, his name would go off the screen. If I had it too small, like 100, his name would be too short. Okay, so test that by trial and error until you're happy with it. And then once you've done it, don't forget to take off those extra characters. I'll just leave it like that and show you again, point out. So you see the G, you've got to double check the G's don't go beyond where they should. And then get rid of those extra characters. So make sure you test every field for the maximum amount of data it can fit. Okay, what else? Now, when you click on the fonts or the font size, it pulls up a window. And this window is meant to select these numbers here or change the font. It's quite cumbersome when you've got to change a couple of dozen windows. If you want to avoid this, you can uncheck the assisted editing window there. If I uncheck that and I click on this field, I can directly type it in. I'll just type the same in instead of having the pull down window. So effectively you can copy that 12 and go down, paste, 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 paste and so on. Okay. Now there's a few other fields that might look a bit odd. If you've got, uh, oh, I'll show you the photos first. Going back to the, the scores, show scores field. If you toggle through these different tabs, you will see, hopefully you'll find the data you want. This page here is showing the current headshots. Okay, I'm going to close this now. Most of the data should be in there. Some sports will have a lot more data than others, like this is set up for the solid standard program or TCS, something that, does, that shows full batting and bowling lists. I'll close that. If you go to, we'll go to the auto ads page and we'll filter out the heads and go to auto ads. In auto ads, if we play it, all it's doing is it's playing a succession of JPEGs that are in, in one of your folders. Uh, to make it stand out a bit better, I'll go to auto ads plus score. Filter auto ads plus score. This is showing those same ads, but it's got some scores underneath it. In this example, you can see the top, top field is overs. It's shown in white text. The next one is batting team score, batting team name. Bottom one is the target. Um, the This one here is pointing to where those folders, where those files are. This one's actually a bit wrong. It is just used, it's just pointing towards JPEGs. So to change this, click on the field, click on add images, and then browse for folder. 
So you'll have it inside solid score, images, auto ads. So that's it for auto ads cricket. That's it. Press OK and OK. And that's the field. And now that field will grab those photos. So if we move off it, on it again, press hide screen, show screen, just to test it. In the case where we're reducing the images, you will have to give it a bit of um, move it across leftwise. So add to the Xbox, the X field. And just keep trial and error until it works. Um, in the case of images, setting the width and height to get it right is um, something you have to test. There is no data, target data showing at the moment, so it's not appearing. If you're not too sure with something that's not appearing, you can take out one of the squares, the square brackets. Both of them. Maybe it's not on the field. It's not showing at all. Okay, I will cut that part out. Now, if you want to create a new layout, we recommend you don't um, go ahead and alter the layouts we've got there. It's best to copy it and then edit it. So I'll show you how to copy something. We'll go to the summary layout and show you how it looks first. That's our summary layout. So if you did want to, if you're new to this and you did want to make some changes, we highly advise you just copy that layout and do your tweaks first okay so if I want to copy summary one I click on that I'll just press copy go down to this field here and I'm going to paste the name and I'll put test okay and press copy screen that copies all the fields and there's a new name called you can see here summary test it's copied everything across in the filter of the layouts, select this one, select that. So there's your new your new field. If you so it looks normal. The reason it's all black is it hasn't pulled across the image. So you can see this image here. The image is there, but it's not checked here. Just check that. Move off and on. There it is there. So if you did want to create, um, change the background, that's just a JPEG. So do that in Photoshop or similar. Now that we have a, a layout that is a copy of another layout, you can test to your heart's desire. So you can move things around, change sizes. If I change the size here to 30, Sometimes you can see the, the batting name is larger. Sometimes you'll be changing fields and not know that you're actually typing it in the wrong way. Okay, so 
you're expecting a change in the, the batsman's details, but you're changing the bowlers. And once you've gone down that path, it's a bit hard to go backwards. So this is when you can compare it to the original layout that you copied and find the, find the faults. Now to do that, you might want to open up, if you do make a mess, open up both and you can compare them. And you can see here it's a bit hard to compare when you've got all of one field there and the other one there. You can sort the data. So you've got, if I sort by label data, you'll see we've got each one together. See the clocks? You can look for differences over here because all the pairs of data are together. Okay, so sorting the fields is handy. I will turn off the first one. Okay, um, text special message, that's the scrolling messages. Uh, there is no scrolling messages on this one, so I don't know how what that's doing there. It's with a big number, pretty much moved it off the top. So I'm going to put that where the where the bowler is. So the current bowler, his name is there. So I'm going to put that at 172. 172. So now you can see it's overlapping down the bottom. So we'll get rid of the bowler. This little minus down here is how we add a field or delete a field. Delete a field, delete the bowler's details as well. Delete this field. So there's our scrolling message. There's still some more bowler data. Bowler over. Get rid of that. And the special message is not scrolling at this stage. So you can see this is the, the row. See the action over here is set to static. That should be set to scroll. And here's the scroll speed. Five will be quite fast. Okay, you can see it's, it's cropping off there as well because it's not the right size. So if we change the speed, change it to 10. Check that. That's nicer. Now the size of our screen is 350 wide. Okay, so the width should be 350. If we wanted to scroll the whole way across the screen. And the Y position should be 91, it should be 0. So there's the scroll and it will go all the way to the end. Okay, if you wanted to, to chop off before a clock or something, you'd just tinker with that X setting. Okay, now the other settings you're going to need to know, other ones we won't confuse you with too much except a line. See the lines we have here? Now I don't even think they're on the screen at the moment. To add a line, I'll put a line about 20 mil, 20 pixels down. Most of your layouts that come from us will already have a lot of components in it, so just check our existing ones to see how they work. And the color of that line. And you can turn off fields as well. Now you can see that line going through the text. Right, from this point we've made a mess of this this one here and it was and we made a copy so we can now delete summary test. So you click on the cell on the row, click on the minus here, delete record. You're still left with all these fields which are the, which the useless now. So you navigate to the correct area which we have. In the case of fields you can select multiples. So I'm holding down the shift button to select the end, press the delete button and they're all gone. Okay. 
So that's a brief summary. If there's anything else you need to know, give us a call, but you've just seen the basics. Um, or oh, another important piece would be to show you where this data is that we just changed. This data is is in folder. I'll just close the program. So as you know, the main program is in the C drive, solid score. Go to XX system, DB for database. Now the one we were just working on was the external cricket or my cricket. You can tell by the the date and time which one we're working on, which would be this one. Before you start tinkering like we just did, I recommend you copy and paste it, getting a copy. So if you make a huge mistake you can't fix, you can just reinstate this, this data field here. Okay, that's uh, the first thing you should do. I've shown you at the end. Okay, if there's anything else, give us a call and or an email. Thank you.